What a night for the 49ers quarterbacks. The top three all played well against the Broncos. Brock Purdy, back from surgery and live action, looking sharp, looking like QB1, exactly what the 49ers wanted to see. And yet Sam Darnold, mistake-free football, that's what they've needed from him. He continues to deliver that. It's been a theme of this training camp and now this preseason. Even behind a leaky offensive line, Darnold was nice and stable for the 49ers. The floor is really developing under Sam Darnold, and that's a good thing. And then Trey Lance obviously wasn't mistake-free football. He had that interception on the screen pass, another turnover-worthy throw. Started shaky, but then Trey found his rhythm. Seems like that's a pattern, right, with Trey Lance. We've seen it in practice. Now we're seeing it in the preseason. Both weeks, shaky starts, better finishes. And, you know, I think that's illustrative of the way that the 49ers need to handle this Trey Lance situation. You give him time, he's going to look better. You give him time, he might start to approach that ceiling because he raises his floor. He starts to find himself in rhythm. He starts to dust off some of the mistakes. And when the floor is higher, you can jump higher, right? You can, you can more closely reach that ceiling and that's what the 49ers want. Anyway, the, the question is, and this is on everybody's mind, who is going to be the 49ers QB2? And this is not, to me, this is not a binary answer. I think this is gonna be a fluid situation as it should be. The 49ers can afford for it to be a fluid situation if Purdy is holding down QB1. This is what quarterback option power is all about. Even if Sam Darnold is quarterback two in week one of this season, it doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. Trey Lance can get his development behind the scenes. Most of it probably, you know, the most rapid stuff is gonna happen now with the 49ers in a situation where he's getting game reps, right, in the preseason. But there are still scout team reps, there's still meeting room work. A lot can still happen once the regular season starts. And that's before we even discuss the possibility of injuries to quarterbacks on the football field. The reason the 49ers amassed this deep quarterback room is to avoid what tripped them up last year, all their quarterbacks getting hurt. So they have all these options now. We haven't even gotten to the fourth layer, which is Brandon Allen. He didn't play last night. They have all these options, and now they can let things brew behind the scenes. Now we still have one more preseason game, so it's going to be a lot of fun to watch Darnold and Lance next week. But we could see where this is heading. And yesterday, this headed in the direction the 49ers wanted to head. I talked all camp about how it looks like the 49ers have the potential of a strong quarterback room, multiple competent options. You saw multiple competent options on the field against the Denver Broncos. Well, you know, we could start with Purdy. There's not, you know, all that much to write home about. He was sharp. He took a hit and he, he absorbed the hit and he stayed healthy. He was confident. He looks physically strong. That's all great. With Sam Darnold, boy, he's got electric arm talent. There was a throw from near side hash mark to opposite side boundary, third and 10, where he hit Daz Newsom, 49ers reserve receiver. Just a lightning strike. Awesome throw. And that set up the 49ers touchdown to, to Jack Coletto, which Sam Darnold executed just a play or two later. He, I mean, w when you look at Sam, the interceptions had been the issue in the past, and he's not throwing them right now for the 49ers. And it obviously is, is too early to take a victory lap on that if you're a big Sam Darnold person, although I don't see many of those online. But, I mean, he is trending in such a good direction. He's taking care of the football. He, you know, Kyle Shanahan thought that if I can have this arm talent in my system, I can find a way to scheme the mistakes out of him because he's a veteran now. He's got 55 career starts. Kyle Shanahan figured he could actually make use of that bad experience that, that, that Sam Darnold had before. And uh, so far through all these practices that I've been to and you know the, the, the full gamut, right? The, between practices and, and these preseason games, especially yesterday's, I think Kyle Shanahan might be onto something. And then of course you have the Trey Lance situation. He worked on his mechanics this off season to the point where the release is so much quicker. So many people were doubting Trey Lance, right? When uh, this, this off season started and they heard that he was working on the mechanics, they said, oh, he'll never be able to carry those over into, into a game. He's gonna revert back to the poor mechanics uh, as, as soon as, as he can get hit. That hasn't happened. It's really, really worth noting that that has not happened. The people who doubted Trey Lance and his ability to 
stay mechanically good have been wrong. The mechanics are still there. The improvements are still there, even though the 49ers are now in live contact situations. And you, you're seeing it translate into greater accuracy. Trey's always been decent with the intermediate throws. It's been the short throws, like the screen pass yesterday, that have given him some trouble. His intermediate game is rock solid. And I think it's gotten even better. Some of the intermediate passes that Trey made down the stretch yesterday that bring the 49ers back to win. Talk about the, I mean, the precise laser beam to Willie Sneed on the in cut. Uh, then you talk about the seam pattern to Cameron Latu. There was even one where Trey got drilled, stood in the pocket like a man, was throwing the corner to Cameron Latu. Because Lance got hit so hard, left the ball a little bit short. But uh, Latu told me in the locker room after the game that he should have made that catch. So Lance was making throw after throw after throw down the stretch. The key for him is what I've been saying all along. He still needs to raise the floor so that he could more consistently be around the ceiling. We saw the lower floor early in Trey Lance's outing with the interception, with uh, you know a couple of the errant throws. It didn't look like the confidence was that great at the time, but boy, he turned it around quickly. And we see how much of a rhythm quarterback Trey Lance is, and we see that there's so much potential, so much moldable clay for a turnaround like that. And that's why the 49ers can afford to keep this situation fluid. That's why a fluid situation is something that works in the 49ers' favor. That is option power to a T. You can evolve with the season. Just because somebody's quarterback two right now doesn't mean that they're gonna be quarterback two forever. Realities of football change. It's a chaotic, violent sport. And the 49ers' goal is to insulate their quarterback room in a way that is compliant, in a way that works with the often changing realities of the sport of football. So that's how they're looking at Trey Lance. That's how they're looking at Sam Darnold. That's how they're looking at Brock Purdy too. Obviously Purdy is the most stable commodity that the 49ers have, but it certainly is nice to have two commodities with potential at quarterback two and quarterback three. All right, so here's how today's gonna work. I don't think there's a Kyle Shanahan press conference, but I'm watching game tape today, getting coffee first, and then we're gonna go live, maybe stock up, stock down, right? Uh, then we might go live again. Then we're gonna go over uh, some of the metrics from yesterday once those come out. I, I really do have to talk about the blocking on the offensive line, but I wanna get my thoughts all together. So hit the follow button or subscribe. Follows on Twitter or X or wherever whatever it's called nowadays, <laughs> but hit the subscribe button, tune in, and we've got a lot of 49ers unpackaging content for you.